Method number two, charging by conjunction. Meet the electric eel, physics predator of the depths, and it's not going to rest until it's eaten something. Sensing prey, the eel flushes out into the open and delivers its death blow. 500 volts, enough to stun even a human. Dinner time. I don't think that eel was charging anything by friction. I did not see it scuffing its little eely feet along the carpet. The eel was using a much simpler and more straightforward approach, charging by conduction. Touching something that's already charged. You want charge. It doesn't have to be so complicated. Find something that already has a lot of excess charge and touch it. Check it out. This Van der Graaff generator dome has more extra electrons than it could possibly want. They all repel each other. Touch it, and some of those extra electrons will gladly spread out into the neutral object that you are holding. It enables them to get away from the other extra electrons that they are so repelled by. And now, when the time is right, you go about your business, and you are charged as well. Charging printer conduction is charging by touch. You touch and you share your charge with someone else. Let's take a look at those numbers again. We've got six extra electrons here. We have 11 total. Five of them are the five we need to stay nice and neutral with our five protons, but six of them, there's just no room for. Those six extra electrons are repelled by each other. They hate each other. They feel so negative. Let's watch that again and see how many of them take the opportunity to move. This sphere is neutral, it's just minding its own business, but when the negative sphere touches it, three of those electrons take the opportunity to jump ship and go somewhere else. Why only three? Well, if all six electrons says, I hate you, I would much rather live light without you, and move over here, would have the same problem, six extra electrons repelling each other in a confined space. Really, having three of them move away and three of them stay is going to be the most equitable charge distribution they can think of, given how much they hate each other and want to repel each other. The result? Charge. You can also use charge by conduction to discharge. Check it out. If you touch a negative to a positive, what will happen to them both? Ooh, let's watch again. Here is a negative with three extra electrons. Here is a positive with three missing electrons. The negatives are happily attracted to the positives, and by the time they finish sorting themselves out, both objects are neutral. Discharging by conduction works just as well. Touch something positive to something negative, they'll both be neutral. Charging by conduction works by touch. Touch a charged object, and you will share its charge. Extra electrons will jump from one object to another, either the, because they're repelled by other negatives or because they see other positives and they're very excited to go to them. How will the charge transfer? Well, if you have perfect metal spheres covered with charge, the charge distribution will be completely equal. Half will go and half will stay. If they're not perfect metal spheres, you have to worry about electric potential energy and all that sort of thing, but the charge distribution will be approximately equal. You'll see later in the unit where charge tends to congregate in less than equal ways. The original object loses some of its charge, and that is one of the byproducts of charging by conduction. If you're trying to discharge by conduction, this was exactly what you wanted. You didn't want to lose some of your charge, you wanted to lose all of your charge. So touch something, you'll lose about half your charge. Touch something else, you'll lose another half your charge. Touch something else, you'll lose a half of what remains, and probably by this point you don't have enough charge still left to do you any harm or any inconvenience. However, if you're doing magic tricks, please note that charging by conduction only works twice, probably only once. Touch it, you transfer half your charge. Now you only have about one or two extra electrons left to transfer, and that's not going to be very dramatic for anybody if you try to do it a second, a third, or a fourth time. In conduction, charge transfer is permanent. 
if you touch something, you permanently give away some of your charge, and it can go and do with that charge whatever you see fit. This sounds almost redundant, certainly not worth mentioning, but when we get to method number three, induction, we'll find a method of so-called charging where the charge transfer is only temporary. What does charging by conduction look like? There's a motor charging this big machine by friction, and all we need to do is have Lewis, our volunteer, touch the machine, and Lewis will be charged by conduction. Ready? Touching, motor on, now they're getting their chair of charge. What does that look like? So far, so good. Now, give that head a little shake. That's charge by conduction. Notice that all of that charge is being shared. If this is negative, this is negative too. See all those negative hairs repelling each other? Conduction at work. Conduction is associated with repelling and repulsion because by definition, the old object and the new object share the same charge. Of course, they'll repel each other. If you want a highly, highly efficient method of charging something up, then make something charge, flip a switch, charge by friction, have it go, ooh, there it goes, and bring something that you want charged and touch it. Wait a minute. Wait a minute, that filament was not charging. That filament was near, but it wasn't touching. What's going on here? They didn't even have to touch. On to method three, charging by induction.